Hello everyone. Welcome to this first episode of CSEC Biology with Mr. Charles. Today we are going to look at transport in plants. Our objectives are to identify the types of materials transported in plants, describe the structure of xylem vessels, sieve tubes and companion cells, explain how the structure of xylem vessels suits them for their function, and describe the function of phloem in the transport systems of plants. Okay, let's talk about the materials transported in plants. Transported in plants, we have water and minerals, manufactured materials, waste products, plant growth substances. These are the four sets of materials transported in plants. Water and minerals are transported from roots to living cells throughout the plants. They are needed especially but by metabolically active cells like those in growing parts of the plant, developing flowers and fruits, and cells carrying out photosynthesis. However, it is important to note that most of the water leaves the plant in transpiration as part of its transport mechanism. Transpiration is a process where water is lost from the surface of leaves through the stomatal pores. Manufactured materials like sucrose and amino acids produced after photosynthesis are transported in soluble form from sites of production and storage to areas in the plant where they are needed for growth and development. All biological systems, like machines, produce waste substances that need to be gotten rid of. Waste materials in plants are transported to leaves, stems, and bark where they are stored and eventually gotten rid of. These waste products include things like gum, oils, latex, raisins, etc. Plant growth hormones like auxins are transported by diffusion from growing points where they are made to areas behind the tips of shoots of plants where they regulate the elongation of cells. Okay, these are the materials transported in plants. Now, when we speak of vascular tissue in plants, we are referring to xylem and phloem tissues. Both xylem and phloem are found in leaves, stems, and roots of plants. We would now look at the functions and structures in dicotyledonous plants. Okay, structure and function of transport systems in plants. In figure one here, we have a cross-sectional view of the internal structure of a dicot leaf. I want you to pay specific attention to the middle area here, where we have xylem on top and phloem beneath. Around them, we have a layer of tissue called the bundle sheet. Around here, this is the bundle sheet. Each cell in the bundle sheet is called a bundle sheet cell. Right? So each cell is called a bundle sheet cell. In the next diagram, we have a cross-sectional view of vascular tissue in the stem of a dicot plant. It is important that you are able to label all the parts of this diagram. Notice how there is a ring of cone-shaped vascular tissue near the border of the diagram. Okay, Each cone-shaped vascular tissue has xylem on the inside and phloem on the outside. It is also important to note the vascular cambium. The xylem, vascular cambium, and phloem together form the vascular bundle. This cambium divides in two directions, right? On the inside, when it divides, it forms xylem on the inside towards the pit area. And when it divides on the outside, it forms phloem towards the area of the sclerenchyma cells. Okay? This vascular cambium is very important in secondary growth. It allows the stems of plants, for instance, to grow thicker as opposed to taller, increasing in thickness of gut. Okay? Now, the next figure depicts the, the cross-sectional view of the vascular tissue in a dicotyledonous root. Although it is not as developed as those in stems and leaves, the xylem can still be seen on the inside and the phloem on the outside, both surrounded by the endodermis. Right? In this area here, we have the cortex containing parenchyma cells, and outside here we have the epidermis. Okay? Now, let's look more in depth, or let's consider xylem more in depth. What do we know about xylem? They are, con they are conducting tissues consisting of conducting elements, and these conducting elements are called xylem vessels. Xylem vessels are dead, they are long, narrow, and hollow tubes. They are formed from columns of elongated cells whose end walls or cross walls have been completely broken down. The contents of xylem vessels have died, or they are dead cells. The walls are strengthened by lignin. <coughs> lignin is a material of which wood is made. Because xylem cells are dead and have no contents, the vessels have no cross walls or end walls, 
The vessels are also made of elongated narrow elements. Water and dissolved minerals can flow freely. That is a structure function relationship. Because of the lignified cell wall, okay, the plant is able to withstand suction pressures without collapsing, right? And the stem is able to support itself, and the leaves are also supported. Okay, here we have an illustration of the longitudinal structure of a xylem vessel. So as you can see, we have this hollow area here, this long, narrow, and hollow tube. And we also have the thick cell wall containing lignin. So we said the, the cell wall of xylem is lignified. However, we still have this, this, apart from the lignified cell wall, we have this dent in the, in the cell wall, or this dent or this thin area of cell wall called the pit. Okay, so pay attention to that. Notice how the end walls, this, this gap you have here, this is where the cell wall of the two xylem cells would have come together and broken down or break down. And you have this remaining section here, right? Remains of the end wall that once formed each individual cell. It is completely broken down to allow the free passage of water and dissolved minerals, okay? Now, this xylem vessel can be very long, or this xylem tube can be very long. For instance, from the roots of a coconut tree to the branches of that tree, right? One xylem vessel. So it can be very long, okay? It serves both transport and support functions. And xylem vessels also carry materials in one direction, from roots to leaves, okay? One direction, unilateral or unidirectional transport, okay? Let's go in depth with phloem. What do we know about phloem? Well, first of all, it consists of sieve tube elements and companion cells. Both sieve tube elements and companion cells are living, okay? As, a, as opposed to xylem, they are not dead. Sieve tube elements are joined end to end to form a sieve tube. So whereas in xylem, the end walls are completely broken down, in sieve tubes, the end walls are not completely broken down. However, as you can see in this diagram here, the end walls remain. However, they, ha they have holes in the, in the wall or perforations in the wall that allows them to form a sieve or a strainer, right? So the cross walls are not completely broken down. They have perforations or holes that resemble a sieve or strainer. Although they are living, sieve tube elements have no nucleus. So this is, a sieve, this is one sieve tube element here and it has no nucleus, okay? It also has very few organelles and a little cytoplasm surrounded by or surrounding a very large vacuole containing cell sap. Now, the cell sap is what the nutrients or the food materials will dissolve in for transport. So because it has no nucleus, right, each sieve tube element is associated with a companion cell. So for every one sieve tube element, you have a companion cell. The companion cell contains nucleus, it also contains numerous mitochondria and other organelles that are absent from the sieve tube element. The companion cell is the, the type of cell that actually carry out the, no the normal cell processes and supply energy to the sieve tube for conduction of materials from sites of production, right, to sites of release or need. The sites of production, we call them the sources and the sites of need or delivery, we call them the sinks. So phloem sieve tubes carry materials from sources to sinks through sieve tube elements, okay, assisted by companion cells, okay? And the process by which sieve tubes carry materials from sources to sinks, and it can be in both directions, this process is called translocation, translocation, okay? The sources may, the sources may be the site of production, for example, the leaves, it could also be storage areas like the cotyledons of germinating seeds. The sinks may be storage areas like roots, fruits, and seeds, and so on. Right? The food that are transported in phloem dissolves in the cell sap that is containing the sieve, sieve tube elements. Okay, so that is the importance of the cell sap to dissolve the food that is transported. Okay, now this, this process of translocation requires energy, right? It requires energy to continuously transport materials from sources to sink. So because of that, the companion cell must have a lot, a lot of mitochondria so that, it, so that you get energy in the form of ATP that is able to facilitate that transport because the sieve tube elements cannot do that by themselves. Okay? Now, so this, this figure here actually showed you the structure of the phloem sieve tube with the companion cell. Okay? Now, have you ever ringed a tree? Right? It is ringing a tree is also called god, godling the tree or ring back in it. It's actually, it actually involves removing or the removal or the peeling of a ring of back 
and underneath xylem from around the stem of a plant. Now, what that actually does is that, okay, so if you ring, if a ring of back and phloem is removed from around a woody stem, sugar would accumulate above the ring, causing slightly a slightly swollen appearance. Tissues beneath the ring would then begin to die because they are not getting sufficient nutrients or sugars from the leaves transported down the stem because the nutrients cannot pass the ring. Okay, I actually have a diagram here. So here, so here, let's take for instance, you have an individual. This is the stem of a, of a plant, of a tree plant, and the individual use a cutlass to ring the plant or remove a ring of back and underlying phloem from the stem, leaving the xylem unaffected. What this does, so let's say one year has passed, what, what would happen is that you would have tissues above the ring becoming more enlarged or swollen because the sugars that are transported from the leaves and so forth, they accumulate in that area here. And the reason why they accumulate there is because they cannot cross the ring. Whatever structure that was allowing the nutrient to cross from that area here to here has been removed. Okay. And the tissues below the ring begin to die since no sugar or nutrients has been transported to them for their sustenance. That structure that has been removed, preventing the transport of nutrients from above the ring to beneath the ring is called a phloem. So this is evidence that the phloem transport materials from sources to sink. So this figure six here shows you the appearance of the stem of, of a tree plant before and after what we call the ringing experiment. Or you can see the godling or the ring backing experiment. This eventually, the tree would die. Eventually this would kill the tree. Okay, that's why it's not good to remove the back from the tr from trees. It's, it's better you leave the back from the tree because the back of the tree protects the phloem vessel or the phloem seed tube. Okay, which is needed to transport materials produced in the leaves during photosynthesis to the developing parts of the plant. Okay, so take that into consideration. Okay, so that's that's all for me today. But before I leave, I want to let you know that I expect that you you draw all the diagrams in this presentation. Okay, so on drawing paper, make sure you use a sharpened pencil and draw and label all diagrams in the presentation.